let's do the recap. In the last episode, the uh, the unnamed new branch of the Everwatch Rangers uh, made their way deep into the Mirror of Dead Men, a formidable swamp along the Sword Coast, hunting for a poor old woman who lived alone uh, on the request of one Gristle Pete Wabash, who lived at Carnath Roadhouse, where they were staying for the night, well, for a while. Uh, what they found was a strangely powerful old woman who lived in a run-down-ish shack on the, uh, in the heart of the swamp. Uh, she invited them inside for tea and uh, other finger foods, uh, and they had a long and entertaining little chat with her, uh, and she explained to them that she didn't need their help but did appreciate them coming all their way. Uh, she asked them if they would be interested in helping her acquire ingredients for her magical potions and offered them a contract which they signed without reading. They then returned to Carnath Roadhouse, uh, victorious, uh, some would question that at a later date, but victorious nonetheless, where they agreed to stay on for a month to help Bog Luck uh, weatherize the place and prepare it for the winter months ahead. They also discovered that a trinket the old woman had given them uh, had magically summoned uh, a familiar for uh, Thanar in the form of a slightly mangy, uh, constantly hissing possum. And that's where we find our heroes uh, on the road, having been paid for their trouble uh, down south out of Carnath Roadhouse towards Waterdeep. Now, uh, is there anything in particular that you gentlemen remember that I have forgotten? No. No? That's, that seemed pretty thorough. Okay. Uh, as you make your way down south out of Carnath Roadhouse, uh, are you going to uh, engage in any particular behaviors that might be non-standard, or are you just going to sort of ride along quietly, uh, just making good time? that one for me just normal all right oatmeal your horse pulls your cart steadily along uh all of your uh n numerous supplies and and uh new accoutrements are loaded into the back shut up the back of the wagon uh with your bags and and such uh and you eventually make your way to one of the final settlements before you hit Waterdeep. You reach the city, well, the town of Thornhold. There you all are. You should be in the top-ish oh. right-hand corner. Neat. Hello, me. Looking good today. Thornhold sits on the edge of the Sword Coast. Uh, it is an inlet uh, that uh, has access, good access, to the Sea of Swords. Uh, there is a large and uh, foreboding keep on the mountain ahead of you. And on the point leading into the bay is a lighthouse, which you can see here. Turning south along this little road, you can make your way into the main town proper. Ooh, and I imagine that's what town. you do. Yeah. All right, down you go and into the main town proper. Now, the first thing that you notice upon reaching this town is that it is not in the best shape. Uh, you can tell that it's not empty, but it's not as lively as it once was. Uh, this is a town on the decline. Uh, 
you're not quite sure what the big deal is, let me get a, uh, a perception check from uh, Thanar and Fitz. Mm-hmm. There we go. That's how he likes nice to <laughs> The idiot servant. <laughs> so, Thanar, you you you've seen towns like this. This is a port town that's probably a bit hard on his luck. Uh, Fitz, what you see is something a bit different. It's very quiet. Like, this is obviously a port town, but there's no ships docked. All of the buildings are boarded up. One would think initially about the cold, but um, something else isn't quite right here. There's something sort of strange going on, and you've seen it before, but you can't quite put a finger on where. You probably wouldn't have seen it very often growing up. So, uh, you find the uh, the tavern is uh, here. Tavern and inn is closer to the docks. Uh, this area that you passed initially has some signs out for shops and distributors, uh, some homes along the dock front here, and then out to the actual main uh, dock area. What would you like to do? Goodness. We're just staying here for the night, right? Mm-hmm. Just to have some shelter. All right. What uh, time of day is it? Oh, we're talking... Uh, at this point, you probably would have stayed... Towards the, the end of the evening. Uh, towards the evening. Yeah, might as well go find it then. Okay. It would be in this region here. So, you scoot along, uh, you and your wagon, and you pull up to the inn. Do you all disembark and go inside, or is one of you going to stay with the cart? I mean, is there a stable or anything outside? Uh, the stable is back over here. Okay, I'll take the cart over there. Okay. So are uh, Fitz and Siren going with you, or are they going to go into the tavern before you? I'm fine with going into the inn. Okay. I'd go in as well. Okay, so Thanar is going to handle the wagon while you two boys go into the tavern. So, uh, Thanar, I'm going to imagine you loop around instead of just sort of over to here and then over I prefer to walk over the building if possible. No, not an option. Not an option. Okay, I guess I'll walk around. Yeah, you should probably drive the cart around. Are you sure I can't carry the cart up with me? Yeah, no, actually, I'm I'm pretty sure. Damn, uh, that's disappointing. Yeah, you should get good, son. Maybe lift more. <laughs> so, Thanar goes off. Uh, the gentleman, sort of an older dwarvish man, will say, uh, Hey, can I help you? We're Wait, looking for a place not to you. stay. Or... Yeah, You're not there. I was going to say, which one is this? Yeah, we're going to talk with, uh, with Cartman... Uh, Thanar oh, first. Okay. Ah, yes. We're looking for a place to stable our horse and cart for the night. We're going to stay in the inn just behind us. Aye. All right. That'll be... Let's see. What was it? What was the, the price at the last place in Leybon? Do you remember? Whew, um... I thought I remember it being free, but... Five gold. Where was Leylon? It's five gold for the night. For the stabling as well as like, oh. I feel like Leylon the inn was included. Uh yeah, we'll we'll say remember. that it will be like for the whole kit and caboodle, horse and all, it'll be five gold from each of you. Oh, from each. From of each? Us? Yes. What the fuck? That's so expensive. How? Yeah, that's just how much, how much from each of us. How does anybody okay. do that? An average most, wage is most, not most, high at most, all. Most, okay, so so have you stayed yeah, at I'm a hotel recently? I'm just curious about the economics now. Most people don't go traveling. Most people don't own horses. Most people don't stable horses. Pretty sure traveling is pretty common in this time. 
No, what about it like a traveling merchant? Super wasn't like a traveling like someone who has to travel supplies to a different town. They wouldn't pay this stuff. No, but they'd anyway, the money's fine. We don't care about the money. We just seem like yeah, we have plenty of it. So yeah. Okay, cool. I'll pull out my coin purse and give it to him. Cool. Remember, initially when we started this campaign, I said I'd charge you ten every time you entered a new town to get all of your supplies back in state. So, he will uh, spend a little time getting your name, uh, some identification of some sort, uh, show you where the horse will be stabled. The place looks a bit run down, to be honest with you. Uh, you're in there looking around, and the, the it's all well kept. It's dwarven uh, in maintenance. Uh, it doesn't appear that it was initially dwarven, though, which is an interesting thing to note. Uh, and he will uh, let you know sort of what the time period is on, on when, uh, how much the rent for the night will be, and then you are free to return to the tavern. Okay, I'll head back now. All right. All of that happens while at the same time, uh, Siren and Fitzgerald, you're seeing uh, Thanar hop aboard the cart and pull away as you walk inside. Uh, you are greeted by a darkened, sort of seedy-looking tavern. Uh, everything is subdued. Sort of think uh, think the end of the Prancing Pony from uh, the Lord of the Rings series. I do not know anything about that. All right, well, we have to address this now. You've not seen the Lord of the Rings movies? I've seen the Hobbit movies. Wait, I know, what? probably worse than like not seeing anything at all. No, the Hobbit movies are good. Yeah, the Hobbit movies were fine, but you've not seen the the like the original Lord of the Rings ones. No, I'm not a movie person. I is the prancing pony the one they go to after getting chased by the ringwraiths? Yeah, in the first. Yeah, okay, where, they meet, where they meet Strider. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a lot of things I don't know. Okay, that's the one I was thinking of. So, uh, well. Uh, as you as you walk in, sort of the the one bright there are like two or three bright spots in this darkened tavern. All of the the windows are are closed. Uh, there is the hearth uh, over in the far against the far wall where the fire is crackling away. Uh, there is the kitchen where a lot of light is pouring out as well as a, a nice bit of warmth. And then there is the front desk where a a, a halfling. Uh, stands on a stool and welcomes you inside. You say, Oh, come in, little masters. Hey, uh, welcome. Welcome, one and all. Uh, may I ask for your names, gentlemen? Uh, my Thanar. name's Siren. I'm you're not there, Cheryl. Uh, I thought I walked in. Did... No, you're not there yet. Okay. This mind. is simultaneous. And we have a friend oh, parked in our cart named Thanar. Hi. Right. Where do you be staying the night? This is the inn, correct? That's a tavern as well. Oh, it's a ta uh, probably here, I guess. I don't know. We're new to town, so we don't really know of places to stay. We're just staying for the night. Okay. Uh, and he will uh, take your names and sign you up. Uh, I've lost my pencil. Uh, he introduces himself as... Uh, Haribald Hayward. He's the owner of the tavern. The tavern, by the way, is named The Way Too Deep. <laughs> really? Yes. Alright. So, you are uh, ushered to your rooms in the Way Too Deep. Uh, the Inn Way Too Deep. And uh, once you're settled, he will let you know that you're welcome to come down and the price of admission to the uh, the, the inn includes uh, dinner in the uh, tavern below. Cool. So as that happens, uh, Thanar, you enter uh, while they're upstairs uh, seeing to their rooms uh, and you are greeted by uh, the room I described. Can I have a perception check from you? 
Which ones of us? You, Thanar, alone. You. Okay. Okay. There's a sort of heavy aura in here. Just like something's... Like a, a, a heavy pressure. You you would feel this when you were at sea. As though there's a storm brewing. Okay. Yeah, and it's not outside, but it's very much in here. <laughs> So, uh, the halfling behind the desk will ask after your name. Thanar. My compatriots came in here just a minute ago. Oh, you're with the other two. Right this way, sir. Right this way. And he'll lead you upstairs. You're reunited. Now we don't have to worry about who's where. We've missed you. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you are welcome to go to sleep immediately or go down to the tavern, buy a beer, whatever. Uh, Thanar's tired. He wants to go to bed. I'm fine with sleeping, too. We just want to get to Waterdeep, I think. You go to bed without eating. I mean, we'll eat, but yeah. Eat? I'm definitely going down to eat. I'll eat okay. and then sleep. Okay, fine. I'm I'm gonna let you know right now. If you decide to just go to bed, this session ends after thirty minutes. Easy. And le- like le- legit, that's how this works. Okay, we'll go downstairs. All right. So you go downstairs, uh, and what you see is the room I described. Uh, you are ushered uh, to, as you sort of move to uh, to enter the common area, and uh, the uh, the halfling behind the desk will say, "Oh, oh, uh, masters, uh, this way, please," and he will usher you to a table uh, closer to the fireplace and against uh, the wall. Uh, you see, there are other people in the tavern around you. Let me have a perception check from uh, Fitz and Siren. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it's surprisingly quiet for a common area. Uh, This is normally a place of of, of merriment. Uh, After a long day's work, people would gather here and... um, Refresh themselves after the day, and they are sort of keeping to themselves. You notice that there are groups of humans over here and dwarves over here, some, and then another group of sort of mixed race in the middle. And the folks from the mixed group will sometimes move out into the two groups, but always seem to come back in. That's where a lot of this pressure is coming from. Um, do I know anything about this town? Uh, let me have, let me see a history check, I think. Uh, this is Thornhold. Uh, this, this, this area has sort of been in flux for a little while now. Uh, over the past 50 years, it's changed hands three times. (laughs) Yeah, so... You know that the first change was from, it was initially held by uh, House Margaster, and then it fell to some paladins who used it as a base of operations. And then when one of their leadership died, it fell to uh, another group of ill repute that uh, you would know them as the Zentarim. And then after that, it was recaptured and gifted to the Stone Shaft Dwarfs. Do I know anything about those short boys? Uh, you would probably not. Like, not much. You would know that they're uh, craftsmen, silversmiths. Okay. Yeah. And that strikes you as a bit odd. If they were 
craftsmen and silversmiths, they'd probably make a fairly good a fairly good living and, and probably keep the town up a lot better than this. So that kind of piques your interest. What's up with this the, town? <laughs> you said the previous group was the Zentarum that I, owned it? I did. Okay. I asked the other guys, what's up with this town? Like, it just has a weird vibe. I'm not too sure. I don't know either, but it certainly seems heavy and worn down in here. It, would the bartender know? Or owner? Or whatever the fuck he is? I forgot my words. It'll be at, at about this point that... Uh... Tavern Keep, that's it. Yeah. Harabald Hayward, the uh, halfling tavern owner. Uh, he is still at the front desk, but another uh, halfling will approach you. A stout, uh, sturdy, uh, middle-aged female halfling will approach you. Here you go, dears, and she puts down your uh, assortment of plates. We're talking, let's see, some uh, some sausages... Uh, a wedge of cheese and some boiled cabbage. Ooh. Side of mustard. Thank you. Will that be all then? For now. Ash Ashley, I got a question for you. Well, yes, dear. What can I do for you? What's with this town's vibe? It seems like not very lively. Uh, well, that... um. And she'll she'll lean in closer and say, "It's it's sort of it's a bit of a shame, really." Um, now don't let anyone know I told you, but there's a bit of a trade war going on. Some of the 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 local the dwarfs would like to. Let's see how to say this. The dwarfs make wonderful crafts. They're some of the most talented folks I've ever met in the crafting world, but. They can't ever seem to get any sort of a trade agreement going. That's all I know, dear. It seems to be that uh, there's some some heavy um, competition between those who have stuff to trade and those they trade with. I'm sure that interesting. I'm sure that one of the dwarfs would probably know something more if you don't mind getting in bad with the. Uh, and she motions to some of the seedier-looking humans against the wall, those folks over yonder. They wouldn't like us to go speak with the dwarves? Uh, they generally don't like outsiders meddling. Either side, really. Mm. Would you advise us to keep our noses out of it? Oh, dear. Oh, as long as you don't tear up my tavern, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Old promise. It's no that won't happen. It's no skin off my nose, but it might be some off yours. So just take it easy, gentlemen. And if there's anything else I can do for you, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. And she will toddle off. You're sort of catching the eyes of both sides now, just occasionally. You'll catch a glimpse of someone looking at you and then looking back to the card game they're playing, the dice they're rolling, the food they're eating. Well, this is kind of weird. Yeah, I definitely don't feel welcome here. Doesn't sound like anybody's welcome here currently. I have Did a training business, so... I could fix this, maybe, if I don't get killed. Wait, what are you going to do? Or what can you do? I don't know. Doesn't seem to be much trade going on here. My parents are always looking for places to expand. Who are your parents? Oh, just business people. Oh, okay. That is the and most our, and our knows who is his parents are, right? Say what? You know who his parents are, right? He does not. 
Oh, he doesn't either? Don't I? Mm -hmm. It's come I up mean, in conversations before, though, with Sildar and Malba. You know I have parents. Everyone You've... has parents. <laughs> you flaunted your position as an associate and yeah, while uh, I've been around and I'm well, also oh. aware of what that company is. Yeah. Well, and I'm yeah, aware I of thought... your last name. Yeah. He would I think he I know would, who your parents are. He would be aware of uh, your family as uh, a trade firm and one that's fairly well known. Yeah. I I thought I figured that was what Flame knew already. No, but my character okay. doesn't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I don't even know if I know your guys' last name, other than whatever you write on documents. I I'll just respond then. No, they, they, do you know Fizzlebang Industries? Would I know a Fizzlebang Industries from where I'm from? Uh, no, not really. Especially considering that it was Fizzlebang Freight, but no. Um, well, Fizzlebang for fuck whatever. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't name that. Living, living as inland as you do, you would probably get things from uh, Lion Shield Coster, who would be supplied by Fizzlebang Freight. So probably not. I uh, haven't heard of them much, honestly. Oh, well, they run that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty boring. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> that that's, tackles. that's why I'm out here instead of working on that. Not going to carry on the family legacy, huh? I don't know. I might get roped into it, but... I guess it wouldn't be the worst. It's just not what I see myself doing. What do you see yourself doing? One second. <laughs> I heard the knock on his door. <laughs> I also heard the knock on his door. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really know. What's with all the questions? At me. Yeah, heaven uh, Heaven forbid anybody get to know you <laughs> as a person. Yeah. Defensive. No one knows who I am. It's all good. We're all, all dark and mysterious with tragic this backstories. Is offensive, and he doesn't have a tragic backstory. I'm really proud of you all for not having tragic backstories as bad as I've seen. I mean, mine's pretty tragic. Yeah, kinda. both of yours were pretty tragic, but that's okay. I've seen. A I lot mean, I plan on having it up be a lot more tragic. So we. Mine we wasn't, so I made, made up for. I made up for your failings. That's fair. I stopped failing, but tragedy. I mean, I like whisper to him. Do we want to like try to talk to the dwarves, see what's up about this, and maybe help, maybe not help, maybe just know what's happening. She didn't really give a very good description of the situation. I don't know if we want to get in trouble with them. Personally, I'm just interested to find out what the heck is going on in this town, but probably be well, safer just to leave. Maybe you should go talk to the dwarfs then, Fitz. <laughs> Are dwarves taller than gnomes? Uh, yes, actually. There's a little bit. Nothing nothing too awful. Hmm. Do you have platform boots? What? Why would we I... need those? The dwarves are taller than me. Just wear your everything's, hat. Everything's taller than you. But the dwarves are shorter than most people. It's not fair that they're taller than me. I mean... Hmm. I think someone taller than we'll the dwarves right here. talk to them. I mean, I don't want to talk down to them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's fair. And you know more about the business of trade than either of us two. <laughs> Who 
why I guess I do. Um, hmm. I say no harm, no foul. Except if we get caught, then there might be harm. But no harm, no foul. <laughs> oh, what are we even trying to figure out? Um, I don't know. You were the one who said you were curious. I'm curious. I'm not really... I don't feel like this is a problem I can fix. Well, that's what we're here for. We can f fix it. You don't sound too confident. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, <laughs> we can <laughs> fix it. Hmm. That was the point. <laughs> yeah! I'm really Dude, glad to be part of this team, guys. <laughs> we can't make it worse. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, you said there are some people playing dice, right? Yeah. Uh, who's doing it? That'd be the humans which, against which, the which crowd. Uh, it'd be the humans against the far wall. Okay. You know, if we're looking for information, it's been a while since I've gone gambling. And I'll knock my head back towards the humans as a gesture. No. Oh, I kind of got scared off of gambling when college, but... I mean... I'm willing... I'd like to imagine you were a crazy gambler in college until you lost it all. <laughs> <laughs> we can try. Here I have a quick question. Is, yes. mag is magic hand invisible? Uh, mage so like, hand. Is, yeah, mage hand. Is that like invisible to people not casting it? I mean, it's verbal. Uh, yeah, you, so you, you, gotta, would, like, you would say, say it. Shit. Uh, verbal and somatic. And if you got caught cheating at a game of chance, you would probably die. No, it is visible. Well, Spectral uh, floating hand. Oh, yeah. You okay. want Unseen Servant. That's what you want. I have that! <laughs> That's invisible. Um. Well, we'll support your gambling habits if you want to go gamble. It wouldn't be gambling. I there the there is gambling. also, uh, I will mention there, so there's not a ton of tables in here. Uh, let's say... 10 or so and you're occupying one and there are two tables against one wall two tables against the other and then everything else in the middle uh, you are on one side of the fireplace and there is another table on the other side of the fireplace so that's two four six accounted for and then four out in the middle okay uh, one of the tables two of the tables on the left are occupied by from uh, left from where you're sitting are occupied by the humans we're talking i think like three humans over there and then three dwarfs on the other side casting glances across at each other uh and then in the middle are a few random folks there's a human and a, an elf and uh i'm gonna say a gnome mm. They're, yeah, this place sucks. The folks in the the folks in the middle are not looking at anyone except maybe occasionally you. Which ones are gambling? The humans. Mm -hmm. Humans. See, the problem, and I'm gonna keep lowering my voice. He said it's not. The only gamble is whether or not I get caught. Get caught doing what? Gambling's supposed to be just luck. Yeah, I want to go roll some dice. If you want to ask some questions, come with me. But I'm going to go gamble. Thanos going to... Okay, I don't have the monetary up. risk here. <laughs> okay. Thanos going to... I'm going to get up and walk over towards the humans. And I assume they'll look at me as I approach them. I'm going to ask, are you guys looking for another player? Not particularly. Is there any way I could persuade you? You got the coin? I'll just make a jingle by hitting my pouch on myself. <laughs> Fair enough. Jingle coins, jingle coins. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, you'll, you can sit down. They will allow you. And uh, 
as they take. I have no idea how gambling works. I am so bad at this. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they will. What are we playing, guys? Uh, die. We're playing die. Guys or die. Dice. 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 Just have three roll offs. Whoever wins two. Yeah, wins. I mean that's that's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. We can play Yahtzee. Yeah, let's play Yahtzee. We're playing. Yeah. We're playing Yahtzee, guys. Oh, didn't mean to click that. No. Oh, that's <laughs> very useful in this situation. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. The 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 tavern begins to flood, uh, and you turn a table upside down and float away on it. We'll we'll sort of uh obscure some of the dice rolls here for this. That's uh, good with me. Yeah. And uh, do Fitz and Siren come over with me? I know. Nope. I know. Eventually, Fitz not did. yet. I said I was going to, but I did not. I was waiting nice. to see if you got to sit down, and once you sat down, I'd come over just like idly, non-imposingly. I don't want to interfere with the game. I'll watch from afar, but I feel like if three people that aren't humans are standing at that table, they're gonna be like, "Oh, what's happening?" So that's fair. Thanar goes over and sits down. Uh, and the the game sort of begins. Uh, they're not going to talk to you a whole lot initially. Uh, That's fine. And then, Fitz, you start your way over. Yeah. You will be intercepted by the gnome in the middle of, of the, the room. And he he will uh, say, hey, friend. Um, hey, what, hey, what's up, gnome? <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing you actually say in character? Because I need to know. No, but I thought Please. it was so. Please. What? Do Please it. don't. No. no, I don't want to not have us place to sleep tonight. No, it's not. I just thought the joke was really funny, but that I couldn't say it without laughing. Hey there. So, um, what are you doing in town, huh? Or, Honda just passing through. That's what it looks like. Uh, and your friend there uh, is with you? Who, which, who does he point to? He's pointing at Thanar. Not sure if I'd say friend, but yeah, he's with me. Wait, what if he said Siren? What were you going to say? I don't know. I guess we'll never find out. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, you do a lot of traveling up and down these roads. It's been a while. It must be. Um, I'm not going to say you shouldn't, but you probably shouldn't. Not if you want to not if you want to travel. Well, uh, so and he'll he'll usher you over towards your table, towards his table. And uh, we go back to Thanar, the Sort of seedy gentleman will uh, will ask you. Uh, so, what are you in town for? Me and my companions are just passing through on the way to Waterdeep. Don't relate me to you. Waterdeep, huh? I've not been there in a while. Any, It'll uh, be our first time. Ah, uh, first time in Waterdeep, huh? You planning on We've leaving been told town? It's experience worth having. You uh, planning on leaving town soon? Most likely tomorrow. It's probably for the best. What makes you say that? We'll cut back over to uh, to Fitz <laughs> fuck, now. Fuck! Uh, so, Siren, are you just quietly eating? Quietly eating and trying to listen to any conversation I can hear. Okay. Uh, let me have perception from you. Never mind, I'm quietly eating. Yep. Uh, Fitz, um, as you are pulled over to the table, the uh, the other two, the uh, the human and the half-elf, now that you're close enough to see, will nod at you, and, and uh, the gnome will say, So, uh, are you familiar with the history of the town? I've not had any relation with Thornhold previously, so... Yeah, but I, yeah. I know it's changed hands a couple of times. Yeah, uh... Generally speaking, those of us who travel the the road are safe enough to stay here for the night, but, uh... You get 
caught up in sort of the trade disputes if you stay here too much longer, especially if you've got anything to sell. Especially if you're headed south. What is south? Water deep is south. Okay. Um, we happen to be heading south. Are you merchants? No. No, then you should be fine. Um, so, uh, the dwarves are very talented at, at silversmithy and, and all that, but, um, they can only send their stuff north. Why? Is there just some sort of quarrel in this town? You could say that, yeah, actually. And then that Thanar... explains why it all looks so... And then uh, Thanar... Uh, I forget what the question was we left at you at. Uh, why would you say that? What makes you say that? Is right, what I right, said. right. Well... Uh... Generally speaking, this town's not the safest place to be for uh, people without a reason to be here. Then I was going to put his hands up like in a, you know what I mean, like a not here to hurt anybody gesture and be like, and say, I'm just here to play some dice. That's also for the best. And now let's see if we can't, uh, if we can't handle this real quick. So let's have, uh, let's say it's. We could just roll straight dice too. Oh yeah, we're going to. Uh, I check say... for traps. You check for traps immediately. <laughs> All right, let me have perception. Okay. Uh. Oh. It's all a trap. The entire house is a mimic, and you're all in its stomach. It's too late Fuck. for you now. You die immediately in a pool of stomach acid. Oh no! Where does the stomach acid come from? Is it like uh, it seeps? Out the walls? It seeps up through the floorboards. Wait, what'd you say? It seeps up through the floorboards and begins Aha! and begins eating your feet. <laughs> so help me! <laughs> God. <laughs> I hate you so much. But that's uh, it was all an elaborate setup. Yep, it was. So let's say there's three people playing and each of you put in one gold. Seem right? Okay. That's right. fair. I'll knock one off the top. All right. So uh, let's treat them as one player and you as another player. Let's have a... Stars. What is the command? It's roll and then dice. Or just D. Stars. Slash R D number. Okay, slash R D. Let's have a D one hundred roll. Boom! Oh, I told you it'd be useful, Flame. <laughs> oh, Get shit. fucked. Oh. oh but guess who got fucked? Hey, right. don't worry, that's like average. That's fine. So you lose that's one. Below average. Barely. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. And we'll do this two more times. And we'll say that this happens during the course of events. Uh, let's have one more. Oh. You win this one. Oh. So I do. How much am I getting? Uh, you net. get uh, two gold. Oh, two shit. Gold. This is a good gambling circuit. So I, I get two gold, including the one I paid? No, you just get two. Oh, okay. Everybody so puts, everybody puts one. in one, rolls. The winner gets the pot. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. I was just... And then we do it one more time. That's exciting. What's going to happen? Oh, oh. No. You lose one gold. So net zero. Didn't break even. So yeah. net zero. <laughs> you broke even. I'll take it. Yep. <laughs>